This video has been made possible by Rebus Farm, the professional render service. Hey guys, and welcome back. Well, today we're gonna do a quick a tutorial. I'm gonna show you a neat little perspective trick, okay? So uh, even if you're a 3D modeler, uh, on occasion you will have to probably do some concept work or you know sketch or whatever, and uh, it's important to know how perspective works, okay? Now, this is a very specific trick, so stick around and I'll show you. Okay guys, well, as mentioned, I'm going to show you a perspective a trick and uh, in order for me to do that, you first need to understand what perspective is, okay? Now, basically what we're talking about here is the principle that objects that are further away seem to be smaller. Now, how does that work? I got a picture here of the human eye and it's looking at a tree. Now, if you want to see a tree or anything for that matter, there's one thing that's really important and that is light. Okay, if you were in the middle of the night, everything is pitch black, you wouldn't see it at all, right? Now, because there's light and light is hitting the tree and it's bouncing off the tree, it's traveling towards your eyes, and that's why you can see it. Now, based on the distance of the tree to the eye in the top situation here, this is the angle how the light comes into the eye, and because of the curved shape of the eye, the um, the light will react pretty much like through a magnifying glass, which means that you get the image of the tree upside down uh, projected in the back of the eye, all right? Now, does that mean that we see trees upside down? No, because your brain will then translate that into a tree that is upright, okay? Now, what happens if that same tree with the exact same height is moved further away? the angle changes and the perceived size is much smaller. Now we know for a fact that if we see a building that is like, a, I don't know, a mile away, we know that that building is not an inch tall. We know the real size because our brain is trained to see it that way, okay? So now that you understand how that works, let's uh, take a picture here. Okay, so this is a typical street scene and what you clearly see here is that the houses that are projected in the street they're probably the same size, but as they move further away, they become smaller, all right? Now, a couple of things you need to notice here, and I'll just uh, take a brush. First of all, we got a point right here, and I'll just move that over, like so, and like so. Let me do that in one go, just to keep it clean. Let's do this and this okay so that's basically a horizon that's an horizontal line and nothing will change there but what you can see here is that a lot of lines basically from this point in the middle here are projected towards us in this way okay so you see those lines but also you see these lines okay and even if you, for example, follow, let's say, the windows on the building, okay? So these windows here, again, that same line. So that's important to know. Now, when you understand that, and I'll just jump over to the next image, you can also understand that in some situations you have more vanishing points. So if I go back one step, this is your vanishing point. That is where everything leads to, so to speak, on your horizon. This is um, a situation where you have two vanishing points. So this is how that works. Um, and normally, the only thing you would have to do is take the top and the bottom here, draw lines towards that point, and then everything else, the verticals, will be fitting here. Now, that's all fine and everything, but what if you want to have certain... Um, vertical lines at very specific intervals, okay? And that brings me to the next one. So let's say we're gonna create some uh, telephone poles um, along this road here, all right? Now, the red lines here represent vertical uh, poles. And what we did is we took the top and the bottom and we drew yellow lines all the way back to that vanishing point. So that means that you know that, okay, every next pole will be between the two yellow lines. And as they move forward, that will give you the correct height, okay? That's cool, but what about the distance? Now, the distance is warped, if you will, as well. 
because what happens there is as this distance is projected to the next distance between the two poles, as this goes down, this gets smaller as well. So how do you calculate that to get it exactly right? Well, that's a trick that we're talking about. What you do is you start at this top corner and we're gonna follow the white line, okay? What we're gonna do is we're gonna take exact middle of the second pole. So the first pole, you just put it in position. The second pole, you can put it anywhere you want and then you establish the first interval, okay? And then what you do is you take a line from the top of the first vertical, go exactly through the middle of the second one, which will give you the base of the third one, okay? And then for the next one, you're gonna start, uh, start up here, go through the middle of that one and move down here and so on and so on, okay? So let's check and see if that principle works in real life. And I just got this image here with the road with actual foam poles. And what you see is if I start at the top of the first pole and we'll follow the white line, basically and roughly through the middle of the second one, we'll get to the base of the third one, okay? So that's the trick that I wanted to share with you guys. That's all there's to it. And that said, thank you guys for watching and see you guys next time. Bye. Well, thanks for watching. And before you go, please hit that MH button to subscribe, okay? See you guys next time. Bye.